it occurred to me when I was observing the painting that I did of the of a crucifixion scene and I might have mentioned it elsewhere or I I've, I've actually mentioned the, these things but then I haven't published videos I think so Lord knows I probably haven't mentioned it about the crucifixion scene that I, I did paint when I was um, a very young man and I still have the scene and I have the um, the sort of sketch that I prepared for it. It's quite elaborate. But the way that it depicts the crucifixion is that the, the, the for, in the foreground stands the thief um, and his head is turned towards the cross and the sun is setting around the cross and radiating into the sky. But the cross is empty. I didn't draw Christ, I drew the sinner, actually. I've only realized that. I, I'm, I know I did that. I know I, that's why I did it, of course. The painting speaks for itself because of the, the two figures or the, the single figure and, the, and then the, the, dis, the more distant cross. And it, it occurs to me that um, the sinner on the cross really stands for us all. That's who we are, ultimately. We are the sinner on the cross, forgiven. It's a powerful idea, and I believe it's absolute truth. It's quite humbling um, to know it, I suppose. Whether I knew that when I was 16, I, I don't think I would have been able to articulate it at all. But it's curious, isn't it, that that's the meaning of the painting? I'll try and um, maybe include a link to it or something at the end of the video. Not sure quite. I'll find out how to do it um, with a picture of the painting so that you'll know what I'm talking about. Such it is. I wish you all a good evening brothers and sisters, anybody who may be listening to my ramblings. I know quite a few people listened to one that I did on the subject of women, I suppose, was one of the main things that I did mention. And the matter is uppermost in my own mind, having not clashed in any measure whatsoever, but having had to, um, I felt at a certain point, elucidate the rational principles involved in a discussion with my still legally married wife. And I suppose it came to the matter of just calling her bluff, I think. And I think a lot of men are doing this. And the, th the threat is, is pure hot air. There is nothing in it. And they collapse because they insist do these women in turning away from the father and that's very often true in their own life of course not 
only the Father God. They turn away from the Father, that's the, that's the characteristic. And so they are under a curse because of it. It's not we men that are a curse upon them. It's their defilement. Um, and I suppose lewdness sometimes, you might say. Their wanton behaviours and proud um, recognition of them, I suppose as though almost badges of honour rather than stains of very dishonour. I mean, that would be the moral um, understanding, I suppose, of those matters, or, or, I don't know, you know, I don't know how to describe it. I think there are some quite serious matters involved here and you know I do have to speak carefully because we are all prey to deception but at a certain point it needs to be pointed out doesn't it to be clarified how things stand and why this eternal fight against the patriarchy is such a conceit and such a wickedness. Turning from the very throne of God and thinking themselves more glorious than he for their beauty. Or their ways. Their charms. <laughs>